Back in ancient times, people needed a reliable way to trade goods and services. Bartering, trading one item for another, wasn't always convenient. Imagine trying to trade a cow for some grain. It would be quite a hassle to figure out a fair exchange. So people started using commodities like gold and silver, which had intrinsic value, as a medium of exchange. Gold was especially valued because it was rare, durable, and easy to carry. Fast forward to the 19th century, and countries began to adopt the gold standard as a formal monetary system. Under this system, the value of a country's currency was directly tied to a specific amount of gold. This meant that you could theoretically exchange your paper money for a fixed amount of gold at any time. It provided a stable and predictable monetary environment, which was important for trade and investment. The gold standard had several benefits. It limited the amount of money governments could print, which helped control inflation and maintain trust in the currency. Since the value of money was tied to gold, it reduced the risk of currency devaluation. For example, if a country started printing too much money without enough gold to back it, people would lose confidence in the currency's value. Let's consider a practical example from history. In the 19th century, the British pound was backed by gold. This stability helped London become a major financial center as traders and investors trusted the value of the pound. This confidence in a stable currency facilitated international trade and investment, contributing to economic growth. However, the gold standard also had its drawbacks. For one, it limited the flexibility of governments to respond to economic crises. During the Great Depression in the 1930s, Countries on the gold standard couldn't easily increase the money supply to stimulate their economies because they were constrained by their gold reserves. This inflexibility worsened the economic downturn, leading many countries to abandon the gold standard. In 1944, during World War II, the Bretton Woods Agreement established a new international monetary system. This system pegged major currencies to the U.S. dollar, which was, in turn, convertible to gold. This arrangement aimed to combine the stability of the gold standard with the flexibility needed for economic growth. However, by 1971, the United States faced significant economic challenges and could no longer maintain the gold convertibility of the dollar. President Richard Nixon announced the suspension of gold convertibility, effectively ending the Bretton Woods system and the gold standard era. Since then, most countries have adopted fiat money systems, where the value of currency is not based on physical commodities, but rather on trust in the government issuing the money. This allows for greater flexibility in monetary policy, enabling governments to better manage their economies through tools like interest rates and money supply adjustments. Understanding the history of the gold standard helps us appreciate how our current financial systems evolved. It also highlights the balance between stability and flexibility that is crucial for economic health. While we no longer carry gold coins or back our money with gold, the legacy of the gold standard continues to influence how we think about money and value today.